Mr. Hearn, I want to start with uh, May 23rd, 2014. Where were you traveling from? From uh, Seaside or Monterey, California. And why were you in Seaside or Monterey? For a arson investigation class. Okay. How long did that class uh, last? I believe it was a, a, a few day class, a couple days. So when you were traveling home, what was your initial travel route? Mr. Smith, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm not super great on the Central California uh, freeways. I don't remember if it was the 99 or the 5. I believe it was the 5. I was just going to head south and then it had been my intention to head out uh, east on 58 to come in uh, sort of the back way to, to my area. However, uh, not being real familiar with the freeways, I seem to have passed that um, and then turned back around to, to get back on the 58 to go uh, back to where I live, sir. Okay. That was my question. You made a statement about you turned around and went to Tehachapi. Yes, sir. Okay, what prompted that? Uh, I had been on the phone distracted and, and just realized that I was approaching, um, sorry, the area just south of here, I, I want to say it's the grapevine, something like that, um, and realized I was taking the wrong direction and so uh, looked on a map to see how to get back to uh, the 58, sir. Did you discuss with Ms. Lamone that you were going to Tehachapi at that time when you were at the grapevine? Uh, I did, sir. Uh, what was the context of that? Um, I had told her uh, prior to going to the class that either on the way up or on the way back that I would uh, like to check things out in Tehachapi and see if I could locate the industrial building where Mr. Lamone worked. Um, Incidentally, on the way up, I was running late and was unable to, to stop at all. So coming back down, um, I was speaking to Sabrina and just made it clear that uh, I was going to try to locate the, uh, the facility. Now you were also asked about a, a firefighter party that occurred in 2012. Uh, is that the same as the uh, encounter at Beefo Brady's? Uh, no, sir. There was some other party plan that uh, Sabrina had referenced, a Halloween party that she was going to be attending. Okay. Halloween of uh, what year? Uh, 2012, sir. Okay. So when you were testifying as to a firefighter party that you were invited to by Sabrina Lamone, that's from Halloween of 2012? Yeah, yes, sir. Correction, she was asking me if I was going to be attending that. Okay. Now, the Beef O'Brady's uh, encounter in March of 2013, how did you end up going to that uh, encounter? Um, in one of our passing, well, none of our conversations were passing, but in one of our conversations, Sabrina um, mentioned that a local musician was going to be performing at Beef O'Brady's who was a friend of uh, her nephew, or her nephew knew about him or something. And um, so that she was going to be in the town I lived in. Uh, we live about 45 minutes apart. So uh, she was going to be coming into my town a couple minutes from where I live and attending this conference, not conference, but a concert. And so at that time, we had coordinated uh, to meet up there when I realized the venue was just a, an open sort of venue and a, a bar and restaurant sort of thing. So um, that way it wouldn't seem too suspicious that I was there and uh, we sort of made it look like a coincidence, I guess you could say. In the planning uh, leading up to the death of Roberts Lamone, did you guys have it delineated who would take, who would plan what portion? Uh, 
uh, no, we were not that organized, or we um, would would speak about ideas. Um, we spent quite a bit of time together and on the phone, um, and so we would we would speak about some of our ideas, or email, or just when we're visiting, talk about some of our ideas, and then um, sort of go from there. The information that you had about Robert's relationship with his wife, Sabrina, where did that come from? Uh, Sabrina exclusively. Correction, with one exception to one time when Jason Bernatine told me uh, something about Rob loving his wife and so stay away from her kind of thing. So that's the only other person I've heard information about their marriage from. You are asked a lot of questions about uh, what you did in pursuing uh, Sabrina. What did she do in pursuing you uh, at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014? Um, you know, for, from the very start, she was a uh, very charismatic person, very uh, endearing, and um, sort of has this reserve of optimism always and, and just a real magnetism about her. But on top of that, and, and so that was unique. I, I uh, haven't found that to be so in, in many women I've, I've been around or dated. Um, so that was already uh, something that she knew I was very fond of, just her personality. But on top of that, she was very thoughtful. She'd um, uh, purchased gifts for me, appropriate for, uh, say, if I was going out of town or, or um, to teach at, to teach at uh, a conference or something like that. Um, she, would, she would package me um, a couple of gifts, a nice card, some just thoughtful things. She would, uh, of course, remember my birthday, just uh, gifts, letters. Uh, I said advances earlier, but essentially um, she made it very clear that uh, she really enjoyed my company and expressed uh, to an increasing degree over time that her life at home was uh, becoming more insufferable. Um, but, I mean, examples escape me now, but uh, everything from, for instance, when, when um, we were discovered the first time, our relationship was discovered the first time by Rob, and he broke her phone and uh, had, had chewed me out over the phone, uh, it was that next day, I believe, she walked by herself over to her parents' house to use their landline to reinitiate conversation with me. So there's these little things, I might say advances, but it, it shows through her behavior and her antics, that, uh, as well as her words, that she was very adamant about pursuing an ongoing relationship with me. Um, I know you didn't use many photographs or didn't publish many photographs, but that's something that um, on a weekly, if not daily basis, there was the exchange of uh, provocative or, or ordinary, but many provocative photos. Um, just so I guess the totality of all these gestures led me to really believe that she had uh, a similar affinity for me that I that I had for her, sir. You asked a lot about your beliefs. Uh, what allowed you to overcome your beliefs and kill Rob?
I'm uh, I'm still working through that, Mr. Smith. I'm not sure I have a comprehensive answer for you. Um, I certainly see that I was uh, blinded. Uh, I was involved in a situation I never should have been, and so exposed to uh, some frustrations that uh, belong to Sabrina that I, I never should have known about. Um, I was included in uh, dealing with the burden of some of her personal uh, burdens that um, I, I don't think I had any business being involved in. And um, But when she made it clear that she wanted to be with me, those things, I, I inherited her frustrations. and. Um, so I guess it was just a really bad uh, concoction of uh, love for her, devotion to her, and a lot of blindness, a lot of selfishness and sin, and a lot of um, a lot of selfishness, and essentially, uh, as twisted as this sounds, and I I hate to say this, but by the time I killed Robert, uh, I. I believe that it was what was ultimately but best for uh, Sabrina because she had led me to believe that, sir. You were shown people's Zoomed in on that uh, second to last portion that you wrote. You wrote, I love you. My vision has not changed. Divorce or wait for Rob to leave. I wanted to ask you about why you put that in the singular, where you put my versus our vision has not changed. Do you recall? Uh, specifically to writing that note, I'm not sure that I can definitively say so, sir. Okay. At some point when you were uh, going through what you described as conflict, uh, was this your vision that you had in your relationship with Sabrina, uh, that there be a divorce or uh, you wait for Rob to leave? Uh, that was certainly a, uh, a more favorable, more appealing uh, option for me than how it ultimately turned out, sir. Okay. So what changed from when you wrote this, where you uh, described your vision, which would have been divorce or waiting for Rob to leave, uh, to where you and Sabrina ultimately decided uh, what ended up being the death of Robert? You know, sir, I... Um, I hold pretty strongly to good liberal values, and I don't appreciate uh, male chauvinism or controlling nature of uh, relationships, things of that nature. Um, as I got closer to Sabrina, as I said earlier, she, in this time frame of this being written, she was describing um, a what was becoming a increasingly insufferable living condition with, with uh, Robert expressing his uh, emotional abuses and um, a number of bull bullet points uh, I, I think we're all familiar with now. So uh, I will admit I, I am someone who, who tends to um, uh, probably be more sensitive to the needs of the marginalized and those who are 
uh, underappreciated or those who are attempted to be controlled by others. And so uh, I was probably somewhat quick with my frustrations in that respect. But the fact that I um, started off desiring a relationship with her, uh, I was looking for a marriage and an ongoing relationship. Uh, as we see on the screen, uh, it would be appealing to me if they had gone through a divorce or something of that nature. And uh, with increasing fervency, she did convince me and I became convinced that ultimately it would be what was best for her, for her kids, for the whole situation. Uh, if Robert were to be dead. We have Mr. Hearn on the stand, still subject to redirect by Mr. Smith. All 12 plus 4 in the box are good. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Mr. Smith, if you'd like to continue, sir. Mr. Hearn, going back to People 68, uh, you said prior to lunch that you hadn't come up with a comprehensive list. Um, now that you have the lunch to kind of think about it, that was the question we left off on. What moved you from your vision as shown in People 68, which was divorce and waiting for Rob to leave, to the ultimate plan with Sabrina to kill her husband? reasons why it would be best that Robert was dead as opposed to uh, simply them going about getting a divorce and that being the beginning of our marriage and future together. Um, there was many, uh, many reasons she presented um, and uh, some of those I've mentioned but uh, specifically ones that come to mind are uh, she said even for Rob's sake um, he would rather be dead than divorced, she said. She said that um, to lose her would uh, emotionally destroy him, would kill him, she said. Um, and that was something that she didn't want to do to him uh, in, in the emotional figurative sense, that is. Um, she also said that for his, for his own sake, uh, losing her or having to deal with the dual custody issues with the kids uh, she, she thought that for sure he would become uh, violent, would deal violently with us um, because of that, um, in the case of a divorce, that is. Uh, but she also mentioned other, other things as far as with her kids that uh, they would be better off uh, not having to go through the rigors of a, a dual custody, two home uh, upbringing. Um, but I would say probably mostly for her own sake, um, she made it very clear that if she was to divorce Rob, her family and friends who uh, liked Rob uh, would definitely side with Rob and, and that she would be seen as, as the bad guy in the situation. Um, she, uh, she, she argued that essentially by saying that Rob had pulled the wool over their eyes and uh, displayed this perfect relationship uh, with her and, and as if they have this perfect marriage while confessing to me obviously on the side that uh, things were far less than perfect, things were insufferable for her in, in just uh, uh, increasingly so. So uh, a main part of her rhetoric was that um, Rob was unwilling to focus on their marriage. Rob was unwilling to address issues in their marriage. Rob only cared about this image-based lifestyle and was perpetrating a very um, objectifying sort of relationship on her. Uh, as I mentioned, or as is uh, written down in those bullet points, a number of things that she felt um, sort of used. And these were not things that I was uh, prompting her or making her feel uh, some, I was not giving her these ideas about her relationship. These were things that I was, uh, I had asked her. I had asked um, how she felt. I had asked how uh, her relationship with Rob made her feel in, in certain ways. And these were some of the 
answers and responses she had given me. So uh, over time, um, chronic exposure to these sort of reasons that um, essentially she wanted Rob dead, not just him out of the picture or gone uh, in the form of a divorce. You were asked a question uh, as to who was the mastermind of the plot, and you said at that time it, that you, there was more of an explanation that went with that. Do you recall that? I believe it was on Friday. Oh, this was in Mr. Terry's questioning? Yes. Um, it would probably be along the lines of some of the things I've just been iterating. Um, mastermind uh, is a is a pretty singular term, obviously, and in this case, um, I know that uh, for sure Sabrina and I both uh, coordinated, or I guess you could say conspired, to uh, to kill her husband. I don't remember. There was a couple other things at that time that I had been thinking of, and I. Apologize, Mr. Smith. I, I I don't recall all that I was thinking of at that time, but just not to uh, not to look at the relationship or the plotting of the killing of her husband through too narrow of a lens. As I know, uh, it's difficult to sum up the entirety in just a short, abbreviated courtroom experience. But uh, I guess to say on the record that I was not the mastermind as in a singular sense. So as you stated, mastermind is the combination of you and Sabrina Lamone. Certainly. Okay. Now, did Miss Lamone advise you of Robert's schedule of when he worked in Tehachapi? Just over the course of the months that we've been talking about. Um, it was it was very usual for her to tell me when she, whenever he had uh, upcoming Tehachapi shifts um, and even potential upcoming uh, THP shifts, meaning if he had heard that people were going to be away and there might be open spots coming up. So yes, I was pretty familiar with his schedule and also with her schedule. As I mentioned, sometimes she would call in to work uh, sick or something so she could uh, come over and be with me. Uh, you talked about the lengths that you went to hide the physical identity, not only of yourself, but of your motorcycle. Uh, what steps was Sabrina to take to hide your identity from law enforcement, and what had you agreed upon? Um, primarily, we discussed at a, at a number of points that Ideally, she would not have to mention me at all. If there was no uh, suspicion brought up by uh, anyone of our relationship, hopefully uh, if they didn't address her specifically about me, that she wasn't going to mention me at all. Um, in the case that they did mention me, um, it was thought that uh, she could potentially bring up the reasoning that um, we were simply trying to hide an affair and not a, uh, a plot to kill her husband. And so I'm sure as you've seen much of uh, some of our sort of conversation in the wiretaps reflects that and some of the uh, sort of, um, that's, that's essentially the, the uh, key point of uh, her involvement was just not to mention me. Uh, you mentioned uh, in some of the questioning of Mr. Terry that she actually told you that she had told or basically lied to law enforcement about having an affair with you immediately following uh, the murder of Robert Lamont. Is that correct? Uh, yes, she had told me that. What did she tell you? Um, numerous times, and I, I think we may have heard it in the wiretaps, uh, she had mentioned that she was not involved with a, a boyfriend or had ever been in any sort of extramarital affair. And um, that was exactly in keeping with our plan, sir. Now the 
letter that was uh, shown to you, Defense Exhibit, I believe, S. Uh, was that written before or after you aware that Sabrina Lamone had lied to law enforcement about the existence of your affair? Which letter, sir? Um, I believe Defense S. This letter was written after I knew that she had uh, lied to law enforcement. Some of the lines in here talks about uh, Robert Lamont, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, you write in there, uh, what you've read paints a clear picture of the precious man who opened my eyes to life and God. As understood by you and Sabrina, based on your long-standing affair, was that a true statement? No, sir. You talk about in a lesson that his life leads, leaves to us based on your long-standing affair with Miss Lamone and what you had talked to her about. Was that a true statement? No, sir. As with most of that letter. When you killed Robert Lamone, what was your, I guess, opinion of him? It was a very negative one, uh, informed exclusively by Sabrina. Um, while I would also add that I didn't try to, um, or I should say, I tried to kind of distance myself from a much thought directly of him um, because um, I guess in my twisted thinking at that time it was almost inevitable that uh, he needed to be dead. And Defense S, you write, Sabrina, I feel like Robert was a man that I wish to God that I knew better. Now, was that a true statement? Um, I'll tell you now, the statement is true. The setting is makes it false because it's as I testified previously, uh, it's a letter designed as a prop, essentially, designed that it could be read by her family or by law enforcement. And the setting of that letter was that I delivered it with some sympathy gifts and flowers and gestures and things. Uh, at a time that she had arranged for me to meet her family because her family was there uh, that evening. Do you know the time frame of when that meeting was to take place? September, October, November 2014? Um, it would have been in those months. I, I don't recall right now immediately. So you're going to approach. I had an item marked. Yes. Evil 77 mark.
you could review that, please? Yes, sir. Starting with the first text message, uh, what date was that text message received? This was on 10 5 of 2014. Okay. Um, did you receive that text message? I did. From whom? Uh, Sabrina. What is the text of that text message? It says, Baby, period. You are my partner in this life to live for God, period. I'm so ready to live life fully with you, period, in all caps. I will wait on God's time and trust in his plan, period. But I'm ready for us, and the ready for us is in all caps. I need you, Jonathan, with three exclamation points. What's the context to trust in his plan? I'll say not directly, Your Honor. What's the next text message and date? Uh, received by me on 10 18 of 2014, and the text says, I'm in love with you with four exclamation points. Deeply, period. A love that I've never felt before, exclamation point. And who sent you that text message? Uh, Sabrina. <laughs> now, the statement, a love that I have never felt before, was that in line with the conversations that you regularly had with Sabrina Lamone as to how she felt about you? Uh, she told me things along those lines uh, very frequently, yes, sir. There's no mention of Robert Lamone in that text, is there? In that text, there's no mention of Robert. The next text message? Uh, received on 11 1 of 2014. Uh, says, What are your plans? Question mark. What do you want to do today? Question mark. Robbie has a soccer game this morning at 9, period. Then today is a community cleanup day, and I have three big bags of papers to take over to the shred fest, quote unquote. Then I was going to see my parents at their little gathering that they put together at the North Lake here in Silver Lakes, period. I won't stay long, period. I won't even go if the weather is nasty, period. So, dot, 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 how's the love of my life this morning, question mark. Now the statement, how is the love of my life, again, that, was that in keeping with your conversations with Ms. Lamone throughout this uh, affair? Um, you know, in the... Months that followed the uh, killing of her husband, uh, those sort of comments did noticeably decrease compared to um, in the, the time prior to his death. Uh, however, certainly it was in keeping with her, her um, attitude and the things that she would tell me. Um, Certainly there was greater uh, frequency of those, those kinds of things um, prior, to, prior to the killing. And the last uh, text message containing people 77? Um, received 11-2 of 2014. It reads, uh, you really are such an amazing man of many God-given gifts and talents, period. I feel overwhelmed by your know-how, comma, but I feel privileged to be able to be a part of you, 
comma, and blessed to have your love in many wonderful ways that I do, period. Thank you for loving me. I'm sorry, thank you for giving me you. And the you is in all caps, period. I cherish all of what I have with you, Jonathan, exclamation point. Your Honor, I would request People 77 be lumped into evidence at this time. Any objection, Mr. Chair? Put them in. Now, the arsenic trioxide that you purchased, how did you have it delivered? Um, it was to come to a uh, commercial address, which was the art facility that my uh, grandparents owned. However, uh, I don't recall, I believe, I believe I was at work the day that it arrived, and um, I do remember picking up a slip for it. I, I, um, I'm not sure the proper term for it, but a slip that then I went to the post office and redeemed it. So in the uh, purchase of the arsenic trioxide, you used a false name, correct? I did. Uh, but you did not use a false address, did you? That's correct. Also, during the pendency of the wiretaps, a lot of times you were heard talking about a, a red titan or uh, another individual you saw in the area. Were you concerned you were being followed during the wiretaps? I know I mentioned to Sabrina a few other times other than what I heard here in the wiretaps. Um, there were two, I think two other times that I mentioned to her, but there was also uh, two or three other times beside the, the time I saw the Red Titan. Uh, there were two or three other times that I did seem to um, notice indicators of, of being followed. Um, so certainly it was a concern and I, I spoke with Sabrina about it and um, it, it was just one more thing at the back of my mind that was uh, kind of plaguing me at the time. Did that play into your decision at all not to discard all of the items that you still retained? Um, it, that was that was an aspect of it. That was my intention is if there was an investigation that was pointed at me, it would be easier to just uh, hide these things away than uh, dispose of them much later, at some much later date. Uh, figuring that if I truly was being followed, uh, I wouldn't have much uh, privacy in what I was discarding. And your response is uh, to Mr. Terry, you speak a lot about uh, physically present, uh, that Sabrina was not physically present with you during a lot of your actions during this case. Uh, did you feel like she was present with you via phone in a lot of the actions that you did? Th that's certainly the uh, impression I'm trying to uh, convey. and. Obviously, you know me, Mr. Smith. I'm I'm not one to sensationalize much, and I, so I'm not going to say she was with me in spirit, or I'm not going to say that she was uh, somehow prevailing over my better judgment through her uh, constant barrage of affection. But um, certainly, uh, I mean, the morning I killed her husband. I had her in my ear on hands free while I was going about making preparations, just like for thousands of hours worth of conversation over the previous years, uh, we had thoroughly enjoyed each other's company, or at least I, uh, I had hers. Nothing further.
Mr. Terry. Established that you lied or at least misled your, your entire family with regards to your, your uh, faith. Would that be accurate? Uh, in essence. Well, you were able to at least, because you've said that you only mouthed the words, you didn't really believe them, right? That was that was sort of my perspective looking back on it. Yes, sir. Okay. And likewise, you were able to deceive your parents and your 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 sister with regards to um, your beliefs for a number of years. Would that be accurate? You're speaking with respect to religion and abstaining from affairs and all that. Well, I haven't gotten to that yet. I was just talking about your, your faith, your beliefs. Well, my beliefs were demonstrated by my actions. and um, Did you hide your true lack of conviction of your faith from your family for a number of years? Certainly in many respects. Okay. And the time that your sister says when you were told with her, and you were told by Sabrina's boss that Rob had been killed, you acted as if you were shocked and dismayed. Would that be accurate? Um, that would be accurate. To the point where you convinced your sister that it was an honest reaction. Would that be accurate? Uh, there were a lot of organic pent up emotions that came out at that time, so it was a genuine reaction, but it was misplaced in the fact that I already knew about it. Okay, but you deceived your sister into believing it was that you didn't know about it. Would that be accurate? I believe so. So it'd be fair to say that you're pretty good at putting on a false front. Would you not agree? Um, I've certainly lied a lot, if that's what you're asking. Yes, sir. That's part of what I'm asking. Yes. So. You say this was after Sabrina had told you that she had told, not told the police that uh, she was involved with you. Is that right? You wrote this. Is that correct? I believe I just said that. Yes, sir. Yes. When I asked you when you wrote this, you didn't even remember. Is that right? Um, Mr. Cherry, which uh, exhibit is that? Talking about P Defense Exhibit S, Your Honor. Thank you. When I sh showed you Defense Exhibit S and I asked you when you wrote this, you did not recall. When you wrote it, Rejection is that right? The testimony. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. It states the testimony. It said it was after he killed Robert Lamont. I'll rephrase. Thank you, Mr. Do you remember the exact date and time when you took this, wrote this, and took this to Sabrina? Not the exact date and time, sir. So when you told testified uh, earlier with regards to Mr. Smith's question, you said. This was after you talked to Sabrina and she had told you that she had not told the police about being involved with you. Is that right? If I followed your question correctly, I gave a uh, an definitive answer, yes sir. That okay. So everything in this letter you wrote, you say is a lie. Is that right? I didn't say that, sir. Well, you said they weren't true. When sure, Mr. Sure. Smith was asking you questions about portions of it, Mr. did you not? What's your objection, Mr. Smith? This states the testimony. Sustained. Okay. Well, Mr. Smith asked you is the following with regards to this following passage. 
Sabrina, I feel like Robert was a man that I wish to God I knew better. Was that something that you meant, or was that a lie? Um, that is something I meant. The venue of writing it in that letter uh, makes it reasonably untrue, I guess it could be argued. You then went on to say, every Facebook and obituary eulogy that I have read paints a clear picture of the precious man who opened my eyes to life and God. That was a lie by you? Yes, sir. through a 15-minute phone call just over a year ago. That completes that sentence, doesn't it? I don't recall. Thank you. Yes, sir, it appears it does. Okay. And that's with regards to the 15-minute phone call you... Uh, had with Robert in 2013. Is that right? Yes, that is a reference to that phone call. Let me ask you this. The phone call you had with Robert, how would you characterize that phone call as far as the tone? Um, as far as his tone? Yes, sir. Um, pretty uh, short. That was his tone? Was short? Yes, sir. He basically told you to stay the heck away from his wife. Is that right? Among other things, yes, sir. But that was primarily what his intent was in the call, at least as you understood it? Uh, the call was initiated by me, but that was his primary um, thing he had to say, I guess you could say. You go on in this letter to say, what a legacy and a lesson his life leaves to us. My heart is shattering for you and for the kids. Is that a lie also? Uh, yes, sir. Speaking to the setting of that letter, yes, sir. that you had in, uh, you and Sabrina had an intent to or discussed your life together, right? We did. And that also included how you were going to raise the children. Is that right? Yes, sir. And um, during the course of the time that you spent with her, did you spend uh, much time with her children? Not until after the death of Rob. Okay. And how much time did you actually spend with her children after the death of Rob? Uh, as as frequently as possible with my schedule. Well, how much actual time did you spend with the children? Um, we went to the beach. We went to the fire station. We went on hikes. Went to the park numerous times. Um, Went out to dinner many times, out to lunch a few times. Um, this was only a three-month 
period of time, but uh, I was trying to uh, certainly uh, look, at, look after them to some extent. Were you basically trying to step in to be the father figure? No, sir. Well, the time you took them to the beach, that was with Robbie and Leanna, is that right? That was Robbie and Leanna, yes, sir. And there was an incident where Robbie accidentally kicked sand in Leanna's face and she started crying, is that right? I don't recall the details of that, sir. Didn't you sit her down and tell her to stop crying like a baby? No, sir. You never said anything along those lines? Um... I remember some sort of outburst at the beach with uh, with Leanna, and um, as as comfortingly as possible, I told her to. Uh, um, I shouldn't say told her to. I I tried to mitigate the situation, and um, uh, she redirected her. Uh, frustrations and I don't again I don't recall the exact uh, situation whether she was uh, frustrated with her, her mom or with Robbie I'm not sure but she re redirected some of those uh, emotions at me and uh, started screaming at me and um, uh, so I, I do recall that being a little um, I mean she's a child as an ordinary ordinary outburst, I guess you could say. It was nothing. Uh, I was not assuming some fatherly role. Uh, as a matter of fact, we spoke about it later uh, when sitting in the back of my pickup truck going shopping, uh, waiting for Robbie and uh, Sabrina to come out of the store. And uh, uh, just not that long thereafter, we're, you know, back to back to being best buddies, so. And with regards to Robbie, I remember in one of the conversations you were having with Sabrina, um, you were talking about Robbie uh, giving you a little bit of attitude, I believe you, that is how you uh, referenced in that conversation. Remember that? I remember saying that I had been encouraging of a little attitude, but not that he'd given me attitude. He never gave me attitude. He never told you that you to leave him alone. You weren't his dad. No, sir. You ever tried to discipline him as if you were his father? Not once. <laughs>